All right, everyone, welcome back to Talking Soccer. I'm your host, Justin Horniker, and today we are gonna go through the St. Louis City SC 2022 MLS Expansion Draft. That's a bit of a mouthful, but it was a very interesting draft. I wrote up a little preview on my Medium page beforehand, going through kind of every team's available unprotected list, and there were a lot of you know bigger names here, Players out of contract, but definitely big names on that protected list. You had, you know, some young American center backs. You had proven MLS contributors, and you had, you know, a DP in Gustavo Bell. You had any number of Ale Bedoyas, of Dominic Bajis, these proven MLS veterans. But I like what Lutz did here, where he didn't necessarily rely on the flashiest names, the biggest MLS names, because like, honestly, that's not necessarily great value, right? But he was able to pick by low on some exciting young players, pick some like young, somewhat proven MLS defenders, as well as bring in proven MLS defending. And I think that was really strong that we he was able to kind of reinforce the roster through American players because it's important. They only had they only have three international slots left available after trading for three in the past couple of days. So if they want to kind of expand that roster further, they still have an open DP spot. They still have some room in the salary cap because that was another driving force of these picks. Is that Lutz was able to you know get players on relatively cheap contracts under team control and the outside of Indiana Vasilev, which we'll talk about in a second, that, you know, worst case scenario, you didn't give up a lot to bring them here. You're not paying them much if they don't contribute. Best case scenario, they are good players and, you know, maybe you can move them on to recoup assets down the line. Like, I think that's a smart way of drafting. It follows a lot of what Philadelphia Union does. And I feel like the St. Louis team is going to kind of be using that blueprint of building up through your academy, finding value, and ultimately playing a high-pressing, fast-paced style. I think there's a lot of parallels there when you think about the two, the philosophy of the St. Louis team and how Philadelphia has been since Ernst Tanner has been there. So let's get into this draft pick. So first pick, Nicholas Giocchini out of Orlando. They list him as a midfielder, but you know, he's really kind of midfield, the wing striker. He can play any number of positions. He's someone that, you know, arrived on a free to Orlando City last season. So four months in Orlando and he's in St. Louis, which he's a KC guy. So a little bit closer to home for him, back to the Midwest, maybe uh, that strikes something from him. But he's a young, hungry forward. He's been in the U.S. men's national team picture He's going to have a chip on his shoulder after going scoreless in Orlando. So if he can get, you know, in a good rhythm, playing in maybe a formation and maybe a philosophy that suits him better, it seems like that's the reason why Lutz picked him, right? And I think it's a pick with, you know, a lot of upside and like maybe the downside is you don't have him under team control for a long time. Maybe the downside is you don't necessarily know what you're going to get out of him but he's a player that has played in France who like has been a high level contributor in the past. So I think that's a really good pickup. Pick number two was Indiana Vasilev. And this one's interesting because Indiana is a hardworking player. He's a talented winger who's still looking to establish himself. An Ashton Villa prospect, a academy player. He left to play at Aston Villa. He kind of made, worked his way up through the ranks, played on the U23 team, had some appearances with the Premier League team, wasn't able to establish himself, moved back stateside to get another chance, picked up by Inter Miami, and then a few months later, he's in St. Louis. And he's only 21 years old, so you would maybe think that he's had this long, arduous journey, but he's still in the position of establishing himself as a contributing player and I think that's important now what isn't great about this pick for everything that Indiana Vasilev may give St. Louis this season I don't 
believe his contract status has been 100% ironed out. In fact, Lute said on the broadcast that they still have to work out a deal with Aston Villa. Now, from what I was able to find is that he is either is currently or coming up on the end of his deal. He's on the last year of his deal, at least from what I could find. So I don't know what that means for his contract if it, they can see out the loan deal and try to work out something for afterwards or if he's just a free agent after that that kind of muddies the water on what i think about this pick but at face value i think indiana vasla fits that team structure well looking beyond that did you just lose a pick on somebody who can walk next year okay moving on to john bell from new england revolution he's a center back he is strong on the ball it gives you know St. Louis an opportunity to strengthen themselves defensively without giving too much to on the ball skill. That's going to be important for the way this team plays. If you watch their academy teams, their center backs play with the ball all the time. You have to be comfortable with it. Uh, he's a 25 year old. He has more of a pathway to play in St. Louis than he did in New England. He broke the 1,000 minute threshold for the first time last year, and he's a left footed CB. That's important also to play on the left side of the formation. So overall, it's a good pickup. You looked at any number of names. I think I had Nick Dupai as my center back that I thought they would pick. You look at, there were a number of young American center backs in this draft. And it was kind of like, who do we think can fit with our system best? Who is going to be able to gel best? And sometimes that's a coin flip. Sometimes you have your man. So John Bell, I think he's going to be a good fit. Moving on to John Nelson, defender from Cincinnati, plays left back. It's another player that you know took a big step last season, so they, they're getting players that have kind of just started to establish themselves, played a crucial role for Cincinnati last season as they made their first ever playoff run. Kind of plugs a big hole, because St. Louis doesn't have any fullbacks with MLS experience. This gives them some of that, because Selmir Pedro back there, and He's a left back. John Nelson's left back. Somebody's probably going to have to switch to the right unless they bring someone else in. They, Like I said, they do still have international spots and they do still have salary money to spend. But roster spots are starting to tighten up now, especially when you have a, a hole somewhere. But I think he's a very defensively responsible fullback, but he's still capable of pushing up. He'll probably be asked to push up a little bit more than what he was in Pat Noonan's system, although Pat Noonan's system is going to be very Red Bull centric as well and then of course the biggest move of the day as Jake LaCava the Red Bulls prospect gets picked up and instantly flipped to enter Miami so Jake LaCava was a St. Louis player for about 10 minutes it was then announced that he had been flipped to enter Miami for $150,000 in 2023 allocation money with a additional $100,000 in allocation money based on performance incentives. Then St. Louis used that money to flip again, trading for Tim Parker for two years of $250,000 in general allocation money to Houston. And that's what really kind of solidified this expansion draft for me. And it wasn't even necessarily in the draft, but it was moves that the draft was able to kind of be there to facilitate. Because Tim Parker is an established MLS center back he was crucial at the Dynamo last season. Not only was he top three in clearances per 90 and blocks per 90, but also top three in accurate passes per 90. So he's a strong center back who's also capable with his feet. And if you kind of look at those stats of Houston, if you watched the Houston game last year, he was usually the one to kind of make that progressive pass out of the back. So that's a really good pickup. And really just kind of like irons out what this draft was for St. Louis City. It wasn't a plus plus draft, no, but I think it was a solid B when you look at setting themselves up for the future as well as finding MLS domestic value players with MLS experience that can step up into kind of bigger roles for you. They didn't pass on any picks, they didn't do anything crazy, but they were able to extract a lot of value out of these lists. And even though you could maybe want them to go a little bit sexier. I feel like this is probably the safer way, especially when you look at how these players play and how they're going to fit into the system. So with that, let me know what you think about the MLS expansion draft, what you think 
St. Louis did. Do you approve? Do you disapprove? And of course, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if this is your first time watching. Let me know if you just wish they would have taken a gamble on Giassi Zardes' MLS rights. <sighs> we can't win them all. We'll talk to you.